Hi, this is Brian from Jewelboxing. I'm going to show you how to align the photo on your on the cover of your case and also in the tray and on the disc so they all line up neatly. Um, it's probably best to start with the tray inside template, which I've just opened here. It's a bit hard to see the guides, but you can see them there. The blue the blue lines are the edge of the where the perforations are. Um, and then I'm going to get a picture from my desktop there. And uh, I chose a picture that was image heavy on the right because I want the back of the picture to go into the uh, back cover of the booklet also. Um, and it's best to start with the tray template because that kind of has the biggest surface area. So if you make it big enough for that, you know it'll be big enough for the cover and also you'll be able to see where it lines up on the disc, which in this video might be hard to see, but in this template there's a yellow circle where the disc sits. So I'm going to bump this around a little bit and get it lined up where I want it so that so that the head is where the disc is, because I want that on the disc, and I want to make sure that I have a little bit of extra bleed outside of the blue lines to the gray lines, and uh, just a little wiggle room there, because when I move it over to the other, to the other template, the, the booklet template, I want some extra room in case I need to bump it around a bit. So that's pretty much lined up there. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is find the center point. There's kind of a spine on the side that shows through. So I'm going to draw a line on that, that divides the spine area there from the main picture area there. Um, that's lined up with the template. So I put a guide there, and then I also want to put a guide in the exact center of the page because I'm going to line up the two pictures to there. And to do that, I'm just doing kind of a dumb trick here where I'm using the crop tool to, uh, to find the center. I'm just going to do that, and then when you can see the uh, You can see the, um, when you look over the crop tool here, you can see those center points. And I'm just going to use that to find where to put my guide, which is just sort of a trick to find the center point of something. And there's probably a better way to do it. Um, and then I'm not going to crop the image. I made sure not to. Um, so I've drawn the crosshairs there. There's the line dividing the spine from the, from the main part of the book and the center point. And I'm going to zoom in on there and find that where those cross exactly. And I'm actually going to make sure that I've chosen layer one which is where my picture is. And I'm going to draw, I'm going to use the, uh, the brush tool here. And then actually go to layer one and draw a point where those two lines intersect. And depending on your art, you know, you make it whatever color, just so it stands out. And we're just going to go in and clone that out later. So, Or you, you, know, you could do something subtle that you won't see when you print it either way. Um, so I've done that. And then I'm going to, OK, here I'm going to open up my, um, my booklet template, and you can see the, the cover of the booklet is on the right and the back cover is on the left because that's the way it folds. And I want to go back into my other document and bring that whole image over. Oops, never mind that guide there. Um, and I actually just want to drag it because if you cut and paste it, you lose that part to the left that you couldn't see in the page. So I actually just dragged the whole layer over into the new layer, and then I can adjust that. Now, I definitely do not want to resize it, and I, I want to. Because if I resize it, it won't line up. So I want to uh, do the same thing I found on the other page. I'm going to find the, uh, the center point of the page right there and make a guide. And then there's also the spine line there. So I know that that little dot that I made in my image wants to line up right where the spine and my guide line overlap. So I'll line that up there. And you know I'm, I have plenty of bleed. I'm all set there. And that template's pretty much ready to go. I'm going to add some text here. OK, so that's it. I'm going to save that. And actually, you usually want to save as, because you don't want to write over your original templates, or work with a copy of the template, because you want to save those templates for other projects later. So saving that, I'm going to close it. And go back to my, um, to my tray template. And I'm going to cut out the part of the circle where, uh, where the disk is going to sit to paste that into the disk template. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Hopefully you can see the, yep, there's the yellow lines. You can make them out a little better. Um, and usually the best way I found to do that, which you may have a better way of selecting a circle, but uh, I will, I'm going to drag guides to the, um, to the very top edge of the circle and to one of the sides. And then I know if I start a circle in that corner where those two lines meet, and hold down shift. It was actually that one. Hold down shift, it'll make a perfect circle, and it should line up pretty much exactly with that yellow circle. 
And then again, I want to make sure that I'm in layer one, which is my photo layer, which I am. And then I'm just going to copy that and then open up my disk template. And the same lines are on there. Again, they're kind of hard to see, but you'll see them when you have the file open. Um, and then I can just line up. Oh, there I turn surfaces on so you can see a little better. Um, you can just line up that template, line up that circle with the circles on there. And I cropped out the bleed from the other template. So the surfaces you can see is actually the trim. So there's a little extra there for bleed, which is what we want. And then I'm going to copy that. Actually, I'll duplicate the whole layer. And then hold down Shift again while I drag it, which locks it in. If I don't hold Shift, it'll bounce around like that. But if I hold Shift, it'll lock it to the exact same height, drag it over, and line it up with the other circle. And there I go. I've got my disks done. I can add text to them or whatever else I need to do there. So save that, close it. Go back to my tray. Save that, close it, and I'm ready to print. All right, we've printed our pages. We have our um, tray liner here. You'd print something on the back, obviously, normally, but punch that out. And then, yeah, we fold up the corners and place it into the case like that. And then the tray snaps in just like that. And you can see, uh, well, we'll, yeah, we'll fold our book here. Same thing, just punch it out. And then just fold it in half and that sticks into the case, into the cover through the tabs there. And there you can see that spine shows through from the tray there. This art maybe wasn't the best to show that because there's not much going on there, but you can see that little bit of hair sticking through. And then uh, with the disc, same thing. Just take off my disc label. We use, you can use any kind of applicator to apply it or do it by hand. Stamp that baby on there. And by the magic of templates, everything should line up pretty neatly here. Let's see. Yep, there we go. You can see the shoulder and a little bit of the hair run into that spine. De depending on your art, you'd obviously be able to see maybe more of it there. But that's the point. And we got it, and it looks good. Thanks for jewel boxing.